it is uh, self-destruct uh, programming. Uh, I, in fact, I saw this this week in uh, in two different people. Mm. Uh, an, an Omega self-destruct uh, program is uh, they create the programmer creates wires uh, connected uh, to their heart. And uh, they are programmed uh, for someone inside to cut the wires and the heart stops beating. And, of course, the autopsy would say they died of a heart attack, but it was, uh, it was uh, omega programming. Uh, the Greek alphabet is alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, Psi, Omega. Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. So last of that person's life. So it is a self-destruct program. Uh, also die uh, from from other uh, Omega self-destruct uh, programs. Um, but wow. um, now the, the, talking about this Omega programming because um, you know even like some of the some emails I've gotten recently I, I think that Omega programming is at work let's say this somebody has no one in their house suddenly they wake up on the floor and their face is cut and, and bloody they don't know if anyone entered in. They don't know. They, there was a momentary blackout. Ten minutes passed. Suddenly, now they need to scramble to take care of their physical problem. Now, I think that sometimes some of these self-destruct programs can kick in. In other words, these self-destruct alters momentarily take the body, try to do something horrible to the person, and then will go back down and leave the person to clean up the mess if they... If they fail now, would you concur or uh, elaborate on on this kind of idea of a person actually battling this? Um, yes, th that's exactly correct. I I can I cannot count the number of times that I've stopped people who have uh, SRADID with Omega programming and they have harmed themselves. Um, it can be. I'll just give you some cases. Uh, one woman, she got scissors and stabbed her legs, I don't know, probably a hundred times. Uh, one woman, she was in her early 20s, she had got razor blades, and each of these were separate times. She she slit her her arms so many times she had actually three rows of rays from on both arms from her wrist all the way up to her shoulder in three rows uh, cut with razors very thin uh, a solid line of, of three rows of scars it, it wow. was so bad wow so they also a part of omega programming is uh, self mutilation and when you ask uh, these people why they cut themselves they say i want to get the pain out yeah so they they actually tell me they feel relief uh, when they see the blood do you think that some of the, because here's one of the things that I've always read in the Bible. The Bible says no man hates or ever, has ever hated his own flesh. Uh, do you think that sometimes this uh, desire or perceived relief um, due to like self-destructive, mutilating, uh, cutting, bloodletting and so forth is related to programming? Uh, I 
Uh, m- many people with dissociative identity dis- uh, do self uh, mutilate, and I also think uh, demons uh, will enhance uh, the process. Uh, the Bible names two demons of destruction, Abaddon and Apollyon. Abaddon is Hebrew for destruction, and Apollyon is Greek. Uh, so there's specific demons whose responsibility is the destruction of a person. Uh, I, and Eddie, I, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Wow. Um, I, I have I have physically stopped uh, people from uh, killing themselves many, many times through the years. Uh, and I could say every time that they were not in their right mind. It was like they were uh, possessed or controlled by something. You could see it in their eyes. They just themselves. Mm. Wonderful explanation, Doctor. And, um, okay, let me ask you this. For those that might come across this and say, that was me. I actually remember a time where I suffered a, an injury. I don't even remember how I suffered it. I don't know if it was due to uh, an, an alien abduction. I don't remember, or uh, maybe you know it was just a blackout. Someone got a hold of me. Somehow I ended up injured. But now I'm listening to you, and this might be my problem. I might have self-destructive programming inside of me.
there's altars there, then the demons may even program the altar uh, to do certain things. So how would you like to feel uh, horrendous pain inside of you, and it is not caused by anything uh, of the organs of your body? Uh, and that and, is what and, gamma programming is. And um, that that's incredible. And I have a quick story here, and I see that we have a caller. So just stay on the line one second. I see you have your uh, you notice put me, put a notice so I could take your call. Um, I remember that there was a certain person I knew. Uh, it turned out they were having pain in their side, pain in their side, and. Nothing was going on. Like, why, why is there pain? You know, I, I'm not sick. I don't have any internal health issues. Things, different, different things going on. But yet, there would, just periodic pain would, would occur on the side. Um, and, and this it turned out to be some kind of voodoo. And, and what, what happened was, as I was praying, God revealed to me in the spirit different elements of what was actually used in the, uh, um, the, the witchcraft or whatever to perform this thing against this person. And I called them out prophetically. I just called them out by faith. I, say, I just said, you know, I see this, I call it out, I see this, I call it out, I see this, and I said, I break the power of these things. Well, when that happened, when I said that, it was like a, a really deafening noise went up to the person's head and then like shot out their head. And then the pain left. But what it was the pain, it was demonic. Now, this person didn't happen to be... Uh, multiple or dissociative identity disorder, but the principle that a demon can cause physical illness, I think is clearly illustrated in the Bible as well, uh, where Jesus got, they took some sick people to him, what he did, he cast out demons. And, and, and it just lines up. Anyway, we have a caller from 424 Area Code. You are now on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. Please state your name and uh, your comment or question. Oh, Charlie. I'm just saying um, uh, of what the doctor has on anything about lycanthropy and uh, vampirism. Lycanthropy and vampirism. Okay. Um, yeah. Doctor, uh, and I see that we have another caller too, so just stay on the line. Um, after we get done addressing this, we're going to come right to you. Okay, let me, let me answer his questions. Uh -huh. Lycanthropy is werewolf. So exactly. there, are, there are actual uh, uh, werewolf demons that, that enter and control a person uh, so that they will act in a way that uh, we would think of that a werewolf would act. Uh, in fact, uh, there have been documented cases where they would bite people and, and act in that manner. Uh, now, of course, I mentioned earlier there is uh, animal altars for people that have uh, dissociative identity disorder. So uh, what a satanic programmer would do is create a werewolf altar and then send a uh, lycanthropy, which means werewolf, uh, a demon to enter that altar if they have uh, dissociative identity disorder to strengthen uh, the power of that animal altar. Now, uh, when, when in satanic rituals they create an altar, it's called a cult altar, C-U-L-T, a cult or satanic cult altar. Um, so, yes, there, there's actually also a psychological condition known as lycanthropy in which a person thinks they're an animal, uh, just like King Nebuchadnezzar in the Old Testament, and they go outside and they eat grass like he did and they think they're an animal. Uh, so there's actually a real psychological condition called lycanthropy, and there is a real demonic uh, condition called lycanthropy, where lycanthropos uh, demons enter a person and cause them 
uh, to act like a werewolf. Now, uh, the the other condition, vampirism, that he mentioned, mm -hmm. means acting like a vampire. Uh, there. There is even uh, there's even vampiric vampiric cults in yes. America, and these people get together. They're often uh, a part of the goth movement. The goth movement is popular on college campuses, where the women paint their fingernails black. They have black. Um, uh, lip, uh, lipstick, and they dress black. Uh, the men dress black, and they may even paint their fingernails. But they're part of a a sub goth g o t h cult, and that is a a psychological condition in which uh, they actually meet at a specific location, or or here in Ebor City. Uh, where I live, there is an actual uh, club where they go to dance and hear music and, and things. And on the second floor, they get needles and they stab each other and suck the warm blood out of each other. Now that is a that's a vampirism. That is a psychological condition. But there are vampiric demons that enter a person and they uh, they think that they have to uh, bite people or even kill people and and suck their blood so there is demons that will do both of these things uh, of which the caller mentioned <laughs> and to, just to <laughs> add to that um, I'm aware of uh, <laughs> vampiric churches, there, these actually exist as well. Uh, where where uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at one website right now, just because I pulled it up. Um, there's a church called Eternal Life, and their premise is never after. Never, li I'm literally reading off the website. Their their promise of a never ending life after physical death is not only assured but provable in the very na nature of the vampiric clergy and congregation. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this whole vampiric cult thing is very real. And, uh, you know, th there really are this, this desire to suck human blood. I mean, I, mean I, um, I know that a long time ago I read a book. Uh, what was it called? Um, he Came to Set the Captives Free. And uh, this book has, has gotten a lot of commentary both ways. People saying, oh, I don't believe it. Uh, well, I do believe it. Different things. Um, but the, the author, who's a woman, well, was working with someone who had claimed to be a regional bride of Satan in the U.S. And uh, he claimed also to have had an encounter with a werewolf who managed to, through magical powers, actually shut down her car um, at one point. But she spoke to it in Jesus' name, and it left. And, um, you know, I, I have come across a number of, of, of just different stories. Not all, I don't know if they're all true or not, but um, <laughs> there's definitely a rich history of mythos around vampires coming out of Europe. And um, anyone can just go ahead and do their own research on that one. On that note, um, we have another caller. From a 480 area code, you are now live on Discovering the Truth with Dan Duvall. Uh, state your name and uh, comment or question. Hi, this is Penny. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm kind of taking him back to what we were talking about earlier. But uh, he mentioned the Alpha, you know, um, programming. And I had just been watching a series of uh, um, teachings on YouTube, and they have been talking about kind of the, the history of the charismatic movement. And, you know, basically saying that it was brought in, I don't know, by the other side, by, by satanic forces working through uh, high levels in government. And, you know, 
those churches, like, I, well, they showed, like, Benny Hinn, for example. And I wondered if the doctor, what does he think about that, the alpha programming? And, and are they using these hypnotic uh, types of things on the crowd? Uh, that, that's a good question. Uh, l- let me just say, as a uh, demonologist, an, an expert on demons, there is a whole group of demons, the Bible calls in Ephesians 6, spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies, which are religious demons. Religious demons simply uh, create or imitate uh, religious practices. So, whatever God has, Satan counterfeits. Now, uh, Benny Hinn was here in Florida. Um, uh, the newspapers did uh, many exposés about him as being a fraud. You can just read the newspaper reports uh, themselves. They're self-explanatory. Uh, I'm amazed at these uh, people who say they're faith healers, uh, why don't they go to the hospitals? Uh, why do they have to go to churches and they have million-dollar-a-year salaries? Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, God, uh, well, I don't think Christ, the great physician, worked that way. The Bible says he went to the highways and byways. He went where the sick people were. So, unfortunately, a lot of things today is a result of mind uh, control. In fact, a lot of these people who say they're faith healers is simply outright fraud. Uh, I remember uh, about four years ago, a a so-called faith healer uh, from Canada, a secular uh, network, did an expose, and to any objective thinker, they would say uh, that it was total fraud. He had he had a microphone in his ear, and his wife was off stage, and she would uh, read detail from the cards that people for the faith healing meeting. Um, and he shut down for three years, and now he's back uh, with a little bit different uh, angle. Unfortunately. Um, one of the one of the famous faith healers of the Southwest in the uh, 70s and, and 80s, uh, he was a uh, let me see what is his name, um, uh, Marjo Gortner. L- look it up, Marjo. Uh, Gortner, G O R T T N E R, Marjo Gortner. Uh, the last quote unquote ministry as a, a, a well known faith healer, he he had a video crew to follow him around, and he would say, uh, back in his hotel room, he would say, Let me say this clearly. I do not believe Jesus is God. I am not a Christian. I have never accepted Christ as my Savior. He said, but in this meeting tonight, I'm going to do such and such, and people will think they are healed. And then they would show him actual in the quote-unquote revival meeting uh, where people who said that they were healed. Now, um, he, Marjorie Gordon was a very immoral person. He... Uh, he made his own movie. The name of the movie is Marjo. Uh, it's it's black and white. You can look it up somewhere, I'm sure, on the Internet. But the point is, yes, there are people that are programmed to simply pretend uh, to be faith healers. I also know a man who is a Satanist. He is a Satanist, a full-blooded Satanist, he has a religious front altar uh, 
that pretends to be a Christian, quoting the Bible and talking religious talk, he does revivals. He goes to the States, he goes to foreign countries, he does revivals. His main job is to destroy churches. He's destroyed every church he's ever been a part of as pastor or associate pastor, and now he goes to churches around the world as quote-unquote an evangelist and tries to destroy and shatter people's faith in Christ and not point people to Christ, but to other religious things. So the devil doesn't care what religion or religious practice we have as long as we don't point to Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And there are, I have personally counseled many people through the years who are, who have dissociative identity disorder, who are programmed to destroy churches and to destroy pastors. I've had several of them in my churches through the years. They were clearly, clearly programmed to do this job. And um, they're called church uh, plant. One woman uh, that I led to Christ, she was a, a satanic high priest. Her job was to go to churches and destroy them. She would talk a religious talk and get herself on the board of the church and would end up splitting churches and destroying pastors and church leaders' lives. Uh, but God has real spiritual gifts there's real gifts of healing and the other spiritual gifts, but Satan Satan counterfeits them. And that is why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 that whenever a person speaks in tongues, they